Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome everyone to my virtual summit from Trauma to Triumph. And I'm so glad that we have another speaker with an awesome story, passionate. She has drive. Um, I can see she have a love for serving people and that's what it's all about. And that's what this whole um, experience is about. Just helping to pour into you so you can be encouraged and motivated and inspired to live on purpose and live in your purpose. And so I want everybody who is tuning in to just take a seat, relax, and be inspired because it's all about you. It's not about us. It's about sharing our stories with you so you can understand that you're not by yourself, that there are other people who've actually gone through maybe even worse things that you have gone through and just getting to hear how they've overcome and the strategies and the tools that they actually use to really help them stay in the fight and not give up. And we don't want you to give up. So what I love about the speakers that I have is that we all have the similar purposes and that is to serve, that is to help people become empowered and just embrace and identify with their passions and their purpose so they can understand who they are and get a vision for their life. Because the Bible even tells us without a vision, people perish. And we don't want you to perish. We want you to have kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> so I'm so happy to have Jessica Leanne. First, I want to say I love your name, Leanne. It got that nice country flair to it. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you joined us. I'm so glad <laughs> you're participating in this live, in this virtual summit. And I'm not going to talk any much more, but I do want to go over your bio, which is very interesting. So we know that you're an author, which is awesome. I'm going to ask you about what actually do you write about. Um, independent publisher, empowered okay. speaker. Um, you're passionate, of course, about edifying, encouraging, and empowering others, and mostly women. That's your, but I'm sure you get to um, encourage men and women, <laughs> which is a great thing. Um, transformational yeah. <laughs> services. And I'm going to ask you about how you serve, but I just want to read across so everybody kind of know what you're doing now. And then when you share your story, they're going to be like, wow. <laughs> transformational coaching services, contributing <laughs> colonists for FUSE Fuse Magazine. So we got books and magazines. Awesome. Yep. Um, uh, so you got some published articles online, which is excellent. And you write poetry. I do. Oh, that's good. I love poetry. So you believe in the power of pouring into others, which this is what it's all about, pouring into others and unraveling those layers. And when I talk yeah. about trauma line, I do kind of go into how we got to remove layers. There's layers that we have to work through and shed, you know, for us to become healed people. And so it does take a work, you know, between yeah. therapy and coaching and counseling, you know, um, it's a lot. But, you know, a lot of us been through trauma. I don't think there's nobody in earth who hasn't experienced some kind yeah. of traumatic event. Some of us have good support. Some of us have yeah. good coping skills. Some of us don't. Some of us never learned it. Some of us never mm -hmm. seen people cope and make it through yeah. stuff in our own households. So that's why I think it's so important that we share our stories. And because I know for me, when I hear somebody's yes. story, it encourages me and inspires me. You know, so that's what I want this to be about. Uh -huh. Well, Jessica, I'm going to let you take the wheel. Um, I do want to ask you to kind of go more into how do you serve others? Um, yes. Um, I serve way, uh, others by way um, of books. What I do is I write um, a lot of inspirational content to provide techniques and strategies that can be easily applied so that people can just take that hill and journey one step at a time. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I do want you to share a story, but how did you get into writing magazines from books and magazines? Was that a vision that you always had or did that come along in the midst of your traumatic experience? You know, it did. Um, well, I will say the type of content that I write happened in the midst of me growing from, you know, through my trials and my tri um, tribulations or whatever. Um, but I've always written poetry and song lyrics. Um, I started writing at the age of 17, started writing songs and poems. Um, I wrote my first short story in 2008. Um, I actually used to write urban fiction, so like really ratchet, like <laughs> just over the top, um, right. like for real. And um, <laughs> when I hit what I call my version of rock bottom um, and I rededicated myself to Christ, my content changed. Mm. And so that's how I started writing 
for magazines. I started writing um, inspirational um, pieces for magazines. Um, I wrote for Nia Magazine Online and then Fuse Magazine. I contribute to the Christian Living um, portion. So, yeah. Well, that's awesome. You made me think about when I was counseling, because sometimes I counsel kids and teenagers, and a lot of the teenage females that I counsel actually gone through some kind of sexual um, violation or abuse. And so I remember one particular teenager mm -hmm. in, in particular, I remember taking her to a store and letting her look around. You know, we would go places, libraries, different places in the community, um, museums. And I noticed mm -hmm. that she was attracted to those type of books that you mentioned. And I kind of wanted her to identify, because <laughs> part, part of my job was to help her identify with how she's been affected by the sexual trauma that she experienced and how that is drawing her or attracting yep. her towards those type of books that have to do with a lot of lust and sensuality. Yes. And so it was like a wake up for her. She, never, she didn't connect the two. So that was a part of the identification yes. of the trauma and the symptoms of the trauma and then learning to heal from that and changing the whole mindset. But I want you to share mm -hmm. whatever traumatic experience you have or experiences you have that you've actually gone through and that you have overcame. Uh, yes. So um, as you mentioned, they are plural, right? We have different situations, um, traumatic things that have happened to us that kind of woke us up or shaken us up. Um, the first traumatic experience that I went through was feeling um, abandoned by my, by my father. Um, when I was a teenager, um, I grew up knowing my father, but I didn't have a personal relationship with him. Um, what he would do is he would come and pick me up on the weekends and drop me off to, you know, one of his other girl's houses and then leave me there and go to some other girl house and then like come pick me up. So I never really got a chance to get to know him as, as a father. I just knew who he was. And so fast forward to when I'm a teenager, he actually lived up the street from my mother and I. And because my mother sought out child support, he stopped speaking to me. He was mad. And so what he would do is he would ride past me and not speak to me. Wow. And that just, crushed my heart and so what it did was it hardened my heart towards the opposite sex and so since my father made me feel like I was nothing in my mind I was like okay I'm going to treat boys the same way and so I went into my adulthood with that mindset so I call myself I'm a player you know like no man's going to hurt me break me and that led me to having a very very promiscuous life in my 20s because I did not want to get hurt I was not willing to be vulnerable. I was not willing for somebody to see me and I had these feelings for them and they walk, you know, drive past me um, like my father did. And um, because I developed such a dysfunctional relationship towards men, I just had a promiscuous relationship, dysfunctional relationship after the next, after the next. And it just left me to being broken and I had a very distorted mindset about men in relationships and for the longest I was like I'm not getting married I don't want to be in a monogamous relationship like I'm not doing none of that but what happened is God put a person in my life who transformed my mindset about men he prayed for me when I needed a job and he was just there for me and my daughter and it made me go well you know what maybe all men are not that bad right. and so in that aspect, I was able to heal because I was actually willing to be open to allow a man to be a man to me and, and learn that all men are not like my father. And I think that a lot of women who go through that, they have that mindset and they either go the promiscuous route or they end up in um, abusive relationships because they don't want to feel alone. They don't want to feel abandoned. They want to feel loved. And for me, I didn't take the clingy route. I took the, the guarded route. Um, but I'm very grateful to God that he has been working on me and allowed me to know when to let somebody in and when not to, and not to hold somebody responsible for something that my father did to me over 15 years ago. Um, another uh, traumatic situation that I went through is, um, I like to say I met God in Georgia. So in my midst of me feeling broken and lost, um, I'm originally from Richmond, California, the Bay Area. I moved to Georgia away from everyone and everybody that I knew, just my one friend that I grew up with. And in my mind, I was getting away from the Bay Area. 
nothing was going right for me. Of course, it was everybody else's problem, not mine. You know, I didn't take responsibility from me not being responsible, right? Mm -hmm. And so I moved to Georgia. And in Georgia, everything fell apart. Like, I fell out with my friend. I moved in with a stranger. Like, I did not know this person from a can of paint. But I was running, just running away from my problems, not addressing them. And um, I didn't have a car to get around in Georgia. So I would catch the bus and the cabs. And this particular day, I caught a cab from Walmart back home. And the cab driver put on some music. And I thought that he was putting on some trap music. Because, you know, that's what they listen to down uh-huh. south. I was irritated. Like, I'm back here having a life crisis, and right. you up here listening to some T.I. <laughs> but when I listened more closely, I realized that he was actually listening to a gospel song. Oh. And it was a very, I don't remember the words, but it was very uplifting. He was moving, he was bouncing around. So I'm like, okay, you know, it kind of lifted my spirits a little bit. And as we were approaching the place where I was staying, he turned the music down. And he asked me, did I know why he put that song on? And I said, no, I don't. And he said, because God told me to tell you that everything is going to be all right. Wow. And from that moment, that shifted my mindset about, okay, I know that I'm in this rock bottom space, but there are some things that I can do to get out of that space. And so from going from having this, you know, this woe is me mindset, I began to develop a mindset of triumph, of victory. Like, you know what? I am more than a conqueror and I'm going to start piecing my life back together one step at a time. That's awesome. That's a strategy because, we, you know, we're talking about the mindset and changing the perspective and it starts there and then it starts to change your heart and then you begin to shed those layers and start feeling the weight come yeah. off of you. And that's just such an awesome thing. And I do want you to share more strategies. That's one strategy changing that mindset, of course, embracing God. And I know you have to go through the whole forgiveness, forgiving other people. I mean, all of that, Not no longer living with self-condemnation. Did you experience some kind of self-condemnation or self-judgment? Ooh, so much, so much um, for the longest. Like, I was my worst critic. Like, I didn't need nobody else to call me any type of derogatory names because I called myself that. Um, because I just didn't feel worthy. I felt dirty. You know, I let all these men have a part of me that is so precious. And because I did not understand that, I gave away my most valuable thing away to people who were not worthy of that. So I beat myself up for that for a very long time. And it wasn't until I learned how to be still, which is through meditation and prayer, and just really listening to God tell me like, no, I love you. When I look at you, I don't see that. I see you as fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the apple of my eye. When I look at you, I see strength. I see resilience. I see love. And I had to begin to believe that. And when I began to believe that, I was able to forgive myself. And when I was able to forgive myself, then I was able to walk as the queen that I am. Amen. I love it. I love it. So I want to know who poured into you when you was going through all of that transformation? What kind of people did you surround yourself with? You know, that's very funny um, because it was not many people, um, but the first person that I met was a young lady in Georgia. She was um, someone that I worked with. And out of all the seats, there was so many empty seats in my job, but they placed me right next to the (laughs) Christian girl. I'm like, look at God, what are you doing? (laughs) And so... um, Yes, definitely. And so she was a couple of years younger than me, but she was on fire for Christ. Like in her light, it was just so attractive. I'm like, wow, like I need to love Jesus like that. Like, cause she got it together. And so we began to just talk. And one of the things that she did was she gave me these daily bread um, devotional magazines. Um, If you never saw them or heard of them, they're just these, um, they give you devotionals in 90 day increments. And so she brought me a whole Kroger bag full of them. And I just started reading them, just started reading them. She started bringing me to church with her. And I actually had my first breakthrough um, going to church with her. Um, I just remember saying, you know what, God, I want to live my life like this no more. And I'm just really ready to change. So she was one of the people um, that I say poured into me. 
And then I just started watching different um, pastors on YouTube and just um, really gravitating more to the word of God. So you basically feeding your spirit with the word of God, positive things, positive people. Mm -hmm. And that meditation yeah. is so important because you now you're transforming, you're training your mind to focus on those things. And I believe when we do that, we focus right. less on the negative things. Then we focus less on ourselves because like you mentioned, you came to the end of yourself. You got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And it was like, I surrender. Because we try to do things in our flesh and we can't. We can't do it. And we do need to be empowered. Right. However, we're empowered by people, by support, mm -hmm. God mostly. <laughs> and, um, and that just begins the healing yes. process. And it begins the transformation. And, and it's just awesome because then you start to attract other whole people. And other people who maybe gone through some things yes. or people who have like gifts and like passion. It's like, okay, God, I see what you're doing. There's some divine connection going on. And so I love the process. I yes. Mean, it's, yes. Just so, it's just so awesome. And I get inspired when I hear stories like yours and other people. I'm like, wow. It just lets you know that God is real. I know that somebody out there probably don't believe. And I know a lot of us talk about God. But you know what? After we try everything else, we just always end up coming back to God. We, we might have heard about God. Always. Before. We might have been taught about God. We might have been raised in a Christian household, but sometimes we go away. But at the end of the day, we come back home. And the awesome thing is that there's yes. no condemnation. There's no self-judgment. It's like literally no. he gets everything, throw them away, and you just become that real new creature. And I know it sounds cliche, but it's the truth. Yes. So there are so many witnesses. Like the Bible yes, is it a is. great cloud of witnesses of those who've gone through and walk with God. And not to get preachy, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but it's the bottom line. It's the bottom <laughs> line. And everybody, Go ahead, says, I'm like you. I'm, I'm a Christ-centered um, coach. I'm a Christ-centered counselor. And really, that's what it's, it's, that's what it's really all about. Yeah. We're looking for all these other answers. And it's like, but the answer's in God. He created you, like you said, you wonderfully, we yep. are wonderfully made. And when we embrace that, how he yes. made us, then a light bulb goes on. It's like, wow, uh -huh. you know, I got it going on. <laughs> but, but I want to know. Exactly. <laughs> I want to know, when did you start seeing your strengths and you start embracing your own talents and passions and gifts that you possess? Um... I would say during um, my growth process, um, I would say back in 2013, that's when I really started to, um, I would say that's when I started my healing journey. Um, like I said, I started to be still more just praying and because uh, for me, pr talking to God is prayer and then listening to him is meditating. So I would go ahead and pray and then I'll be still and just wait for him to just deposit what it is that I wanted to do. Um, or that I needed rather. And so then I just started asking him, like, what do you want me to do? Like, what is my purpose? And he reminded me that, you know, everything that you are going to do or that you need, you already have it and you already know how to do yeah. it. So then I remember like, well, I do know how to write. And writing poetry is something that actually helped me to begin to form my thoughts and just be able to express myself about how I felt about myself, how I felt about God, how I felt about where I was going. So just during that process of God molding me into another vessel, making me whole again, and that's when I really discovered like, wow, I am strong and I can actually teach somebody else how to do this. And so from there, that's when I started um, just moving in my purpose. Another strategy, right? Journaling. That writing down yes. everything, we always say write the vision, make it plain, but journaling is just such a release in that by itself. And then you can meditate on things yes. that you go, sometimes I go over things that I've written a long time ago and I'm like, wow, that was pretty deep. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's funny because God will use all of that for what, whether it's that book, yes. article, or whatever you're writing, because that, you know, it's, I always talk about repurposing things that we use, things that we've written. This stuff I wrote in school that I've actually used uh -huh. to put in my book. I'm like, wow, I got something to reference to. So nothing is in vain. It's like it's, all things are working together for the good. No. You may not see it at the time. Everything. And when you come out of it, you look back and yeah. go, oh, God, I, I, I get it. And it's not that he wants you to go through that, but he will use what right. you've been through. And I want to make that clear because a lot of people say, well, you got to yes, go will. through this. I don't think God wants you to go through things, mm -hmm. but he allows us to go through things, but he uses our stories. He uses our yes. experience. That's why it's so important for us to share our testimonies and our stories. 
so we can really help pull somebody else out of whatever pit they put themselves in or somebody else did because he mm -hmm. wants us all to live and, and really walk in that abundant life. And when I say abundant, I don't mean just financially. I mean in every area of our life. Just having good friends, that's an abundance right there. That's a blessing. Mm -hmm. A lot of us go yes. alone. Like you say, you didn't have a whole lot of people, but it just takes one person or one word mm -hmm. or one message or something that can spark change, that can cause a, a positive reaction in the in the going forward for somebody else. So I'm, that's just awesome to me. I'm so right. glad what God has done in your life. You can just see the, the glory and all of that stuff. Because, you know, like, it's an old saying. <laughs> like, people don't know the story behind our glory. <laughs> they don't. We don't, because we don't come right. out. We don't yeah. come out looking like what we've been through, as I always say. And um, it's just it's marvelous. It, that's the testimony. When people hear it, like, wow, you went yeah. through all of that? You don't look nothing like that. I'm not uh -huh. supposed to be not supposed to be <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> we are overpowered. Exactly. But anyway, exactly. so yeah, it is, it's important that we pour into each other. And I see that's what you do in so many different facets. And I just wish you Godspeed. I do want you to let other people know how they can reach out, connect with you. If you got any freebies, any specials, anything, how um, let people know how they can connect with you. And um, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, um, I do um, have a freebie. It's actually called Operation Restoration, where it is teaching you how to renew your mind. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, changing my mindset played a huge, huge role in me growing and me being able to walk victoriously. Um, so I do have some tidbits on how I renewed my mind, just some little tips and strategies and some resources. Um, books and, and learning how to create affirmations. Um, so I do have that freebie. Um, I can be reached um, via my website, www.jessicaleann.com. That's J-E-S-S-I-C-A-L-E-E-A-N-N.com. And I'm on Facebook under Jessica Leanne. And I'm also on Instagram. I love Instagram. <laughs> and I am at Jessica Leanne Writes. So, yeah. That's awesome. What I like about today is that people don't, they can find somebody anywhere, anywhere, like the World Wide Web, you know, yeah. <laughs> that to reach people, who can I connect with? And I just believe social media can be used yeah. as that vehicle where people can reach out to you, um, whether it's Facebook or Instagram yeah. or Twitter, or whatever, and just really connect with you. And I just think that's so awesome. And I always encourage people, utilize that. There's groups on on these social medias that yes. you can join or people who are going through the same issue or something similar. And so you don't have to go through it alone. So I yeah. thank you so much, Jessica, for what you do, how you serve others. Keep doing what you're doing. I know, I know it's awesome. And I just really look forward to connecting with you in the future. And maybe some projects you may have coming up. Give me yes. a call. <laughs> Contact me. But thank you so much. Everybody. Yes. <laughs> thank you for tuning in to this summit from trauma to triumph share with people you know friends family you know you got seven days straight of awesomeness of empowering stories of life-changing transformational stories because we want you to be healed we want you to live and not give up <laughs> so we speak in life into you we speak in positivity we speak in prosperity we speak in productivity whatever it is but we want to pull you up so that you can really embrace what you have inside of you Everybody has a gift of purpose, purposes, yep. talents, something. And sometimes we don't know what it is. And sometimes we're just not paying attention because of the pain that masks all of that. But when you start to shed all of that, you begin to find out who you are mm -hmm. and then how you can live that out in the earth. So I'm so thankful. Thank, thank you again, Jessica, for joining us. And thank you, everybody who tuned in. And I look thank forward you. to connecting with you soon. God bless. <laughs>